Hello there. Hello there. Mmm. Mmm. I do not know what happened. Apparently, apparently, you know that kid on Ellen DeGeneres who goes, apparently, uh, yeah, the live stream busted. I broke the internet and um, not cool. Okay, we got one person back. We got two people back. We got three. Can I get a third? Oh, I got a third. Okay, so we're back. Uh, and we're back. Okay, I don't know what happened. Uh, Nicholas, hey, what's up? So, what was I talking about? Hmm. I forgot what I was talking about. So, oh, I also wanted to talk about we are officially debt free. And uh, so, um, basically, we had student loans, we had car payments, you know, very, very typical normal stuff. And I, I want to share this. I'm going to do a video series on it and on how we did it. But we followed Dave Ramsey's baby steps. Dave Ramsey is a financial speaker, uh, uh, financial advisor. Well, not advisor, but he, he, he does a lot of speaking. He has a radio show on it. Yeah, we're debt free, baby. So we were just going hard at it. I mean, as a teacher, my wife's a teacher, I'm a social worker. It's not easy, right? And um, what we just decided early on in life, like, hey, we don't want to live in debt. I don't, I hate debt. And um, I graduated college in 2012. And I'm thinking in my head, like, it's almost 2019. Like, I better do something about this. It's almost been a decade. And uh, I have friends who are still paying off debt um, you know, like, it's almost like they haven't even started. And so I just, we didn't want to live that lifestyle of always having to worry and, you know, always being one financial crisis away from, you know, something crazy. So we just, we were just chucking money at it. And now it's really cool because we celebrated, we, we were up north, we were celebrating. And, um, you know, now it's like there's a weight off my shoulders. Um, now we can financially plan for our future and uh, we could save for things like vacations and um, you know it's just it's really nice we don't we don't own this house we're renting this house but now we can save for a down payment if we want a house now we can now we can spend money on on things that that you know maybe we want like maybe I want more camera gear um, I could do it before it was just now I don't have to worry about there's not as much risk involved in investing in YouTube because we're debt free. So I just want to say thank you guys very much. Um, really, like from the bottom of my heart, if, if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't have been able to be debt free because I do get money from YouTube and that really did help a lot. And um, and so just being so if you if you are in debt, here's what I gotta say: just be consistent. Write a write a budget. We we use the uh, Every Dollar app for every purchase. It's a Dave Ramsey app. You put all of your stuff in. It helps you keep on the budget because it's on your phone. And um, every time you purchase something, you put it in there and it reminds you, okay, wow, like I only have $30 left in this category. And so get a written budget and just really, as much as you can, if you get a little extra money here, you know, put it toward debt. Don't keep it because if you keep it, you're going to spend it. Um, so those are like my tips. Get a written budget. Um, cut any expenses that are just stupid. Um, when you try to go debt free, you realize that almost everything you have is very unnecessary. And um, so we just try to just get rid of a lot of junk. And we, I would do often uh, side jobs, and I would make YouTube videos. So yeah, yes, I've been to I've been to Fox Cigar Bar. It was very. I've been there t three times. I have a gift card for $40 left, and so if I go back, I'm definitely going to get some more bourbon. Yes, Ezra Zion, um, the guys, the, the owners of Ezra Zion Cigars are awesome. When I first started YouTube, they reached out to me because they're also Christians and they're cigar guys, and I was, um, it was me, it was Cigar Obsession and me. We were the only two guys on YouTube at the time doing cigars. And so my competition was just me and Brian Glenn, right? And so uh, the Ezra Zion guys, they sent out a bunch of stuff and their Blessed Leaf is awesome. Their Kairos is awesome. Uh, 
They have a few others that are very, very good. I've never tried uh, Ezra Zion coffee, though. Mm -hmm. So Kyle, Kyle's the owner, if you're watching, send, you send me some coffee, man. I, I would love that. Mm -hmm. Hey, howdy, Smokey Mo. Smokey Mo. Smoke Mo. Smoke Mo. So, yeah, um, so we're debt free. And um, I think I'm very passionate about that. And um, you have to have a why. If you want to be debt free, um, it's not just I want to be debt free. You want to, I think for us, we, we wanted to be debt free because we wanted to travel more. We wanted to go home to Chicago to see our family. And now we could do that easier. Um, now I could put more money toward retirement. Now I could um, put more money toward, uh, now we could start saving up for a house. And, um, you know, we don't have to worry about a lot because we're debt free. We, we scratched our way out of debt. So now we, now we know never to go back into it. You know, we know what that's like. Um, hey, Kberry, I'm trying to start a cigar review on Instagram. Kberry, definitely do it. There's only a few guys who do stuff on Instagram. And um, how we cigar reviews used to do it. Basically, you do a one minute cigar video on Instagram, take pictures. And people really, um, that's what people are going toward. I find that people are not watching cigar videos, uh, cigar reviews. They're watching cigar videos on the topic. But as far as individual cigar reviews, Instagram might be the future of that. And so I would definitely recommend that. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Is this better if I turn the light up? Let's see. And let's see. So, um, I need some help with that. So basically what I tell people is if you want to review stuff, you don't need a fancy camera. You don't need uh, fancy knowledge. Um, the way I did it was I used my phone for many, many years. I'm using my iPhone 6S Plus right now. This is a 6S Plus. This, cam this phone is, what, three years old now? Um, and just start hashtagging and, and create an audience and and do engagements you what you want is you want engaging you want engaging content um, hmm yeah simple straightforward honest reviews and let people know like hey this is my perception okay this does not mean uh, that you will like it or not like it you might find that this tastes like pistachios and and nothing like what I'm describing so um, cigars are very subjective and let people know that you know low tech crew checking in yeah so um, for six or seven years I was using my iPhone 4 if you guys know the iPhone 4 is a really bad camera but I did everything on that I I built a brand on an iPhone 4 so what it tells me is that content is king and not quality photos I mean those are very very nice um, and if you want to spend a couple hundred bucks, get one. But at the end of the day, the story is king. The content is king. Engagements are number one. Um, you know, right now I have a simple ring light right here. This was a $200 light. You don't even need that. You can just get a regular shop light. Um, you know, you don't need this to roast coffee. What you need is a heat source. If you want to get fancy, you can get a coffee roaster. Um, but really engaging with people and, and telling your story and uh, creating content that is meaningful. Um, you know, um, for instance, oh, what am I drinking? This is a Cabernet. I think it's called Parker and Sons or Parker's. Parker and Sons? I don't remember. It's a Cabernet. It's a very mid-level, you know, $12 bottle of wine. It's, it's, a, it's a great cab. It matches the cigar pretty well. It's a little bit sweet. And I generally don't drink wine with cigars, but I if I do, it's a cab. Um, but yeah, content is king. And uh, what people want, people, people are addicted. People are addicted to connection. 
And, and so, um, number one, if you are wanting to start a YouTube channel or an Instagram reviewing thing, oh, hold on. Mm, almost dead. Where did it go? Number one thing is you want to create an audience that knows your inside jokes and knows your struggles and, you know, like, you're gonna create enemies, okay? Like, I have a lot of haters. I don't know why. I've got like 10 people that watch my crap and they always comment negative things. I, it doesn't make any sense to me. But for whatever reason, you're gonna create, you, you know you're doing it right when you create haters. So, um, you know, I would just say that. Like, you know you're doing it right when you have controversy and uh, you're not gonna get everyone to like you, but the people that do like you, they're very, very, you know, they're loyal. And you wanna create loyalty, cause, because that's really the only thing, you know? Uh, what do you drink? Okay, uh, I like Drew Estate Natural. Drew Estate Natural is very good. I think they're, are they flavored? I think they're flavored. Christina says, hate is gonna hate. Yeah, so for instance, um, my mom, I, she, she has this awesome house, right? It's a lake house, and I did a few awesome videos there. I have the drone up there, droning around the top of the lighthouse part where the smoking room is. There's a lot of hateful comments about how we're evil, how we're mean, how we stole from people, or how we, how we don't deserve what we have. And I'm like, you know, that's people just, they can think whatever they want, because maybe at the end of the day, they're jealous. And, and instead of celebrating that with you, they often are just... They're just gonna hate because they can, you know. Mhm. Mm I would tell this. Um, people often ask me. People often ask me when is the best time to start uh, a YouTube channel, and I say the best time is now because you, uh, internet v video and internet entertainment and video is just it's growing a hundred times. And you're never, you're never too late to start. And the, the, the trick is you have to do it consistently. You have to do it. I spend three hours a day doing it. What you see are five, what you see are five minute videos, right? But what I see are two hours of emails, two hours of editing, and you know, a five minute video. It's like there's a lot of work that goes into it. So if you're going, if you're doing Instagram, it's a lot quicker. You could do a post a day in 10 minutes, and I would recommend it. So, um, but it's harder to, if you want to do it for money, um, it's harder to make money with cigars. So I would start off just doing it just because you're passionate. That's how I started. And then over time you figure out, okay, um, I can, people start asking you the same questions, and you can recommend certain things. And uh, based on those recommendations, sometimes you get referral fees. Sometimes we call that affiliate marketing. Has your wife smoked a cigar yet? If not, I would love to see that. She has. My wife has smoked the best cigar I've ever had. And that was a Partagas Siri P number two in the Tubo. It's a beautiful Cuban cigar. And uh, she barely put, this is what she did. My wife did this, right? Sam did this. You know I mean? Is this too bright? She did this. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, she, that was a great cigar, very milky, uh, smooth, chocolatey, um, just a great cigar, and she was just kind of like, eh, eh, whatever. My dad, um, you saw a video of my dad having his first cigar, and that was a genuine reaction. He was like, you know, he's like, this is kind of like smoking is a cigar, it's kind of like drinking a coffee. And that's kind of how I would describe it for a lot of people. Um, they assume it's like cigarettes, but it's really not. Yeah, the, it's, my, my friend Richie loves uh, the Java Mint, so maybe I'll let her try that. Yeah, Christina loved that video. So I'm going to be back there in, um, with my dad in one month. Maybe I'll get him to try another one. Maybe. Mm-hmm. My dad, he's a, he's a goofball. His name is Brian. And he's a lot like me, except 30 years older. And he is, um, 
he when he he's really he's he's actually kind of like that in real life. I mean, he's not that goofy, but you know, he's just a fun guy and he's retired and he's he likes making jokes and he's pretty corny. So when people um people in the video were like, "Your dad's really," I'm like, "No, that's really how he is. Like, he's just a fun guy. He's you know." What's the most you've spent on a cigar? So the most I've ever spent was on. It was actually a fake cigar in the Bahamas for our anniversary. I bought a fake Cohiba Bahique, and I'm pretty sure I knew it was fake, but it was like 45 bucks. And I was like, you know what? I'm on my honeymoon. Even if it's even if it's fake, I was like, whatever. It'll be a good story. And so I bought it, and it was 45 bucks. And I bought another cigar for, uh, let's see here. I bought one for, I think, 35. You know, a lot of high-end cigars kind of stop around $30. Um, so for the most part, a high-end cigar is like $30. That's like very expensive. Oh. For, for the most part, a high-end cigar is around $30. Hold on here. I'd say my average cigar is around eight dollars. Um, if you buy them at a shop, eight dollars is average. If you are buying a cigar online, average is probably five dollars. Um, yeah. I don't know movement. Oh, let's see here. I missed a few. I want to try a tab. Oh, oh. Yeah, I got great memories of my dad. My dad's awesome. Movement eighty five says I want to try a, tab a tabernacle now. How are they smiley mo? I've never tried a tabernacle. Christina says $13 for a Tatawahi monster. That's my point is even like a high end, relatively rare cigar, like a Tatawahi monster, that's $13. And to me, that's an excellent cigar and they're highly collectible. Um, so cigars don't have to be outrageous. Um, check coronacigars.com, 10, dollars per stick wow that's a pretty good deal um christina says her average cigar is around eight to ten dollars and i would definitely agree with that um here's what i've noticed there's there's a I, it's called a diminishing return so on a plane what happens is right around i would say um let's just say four dollars that's when things get pretty good okay and then things get really good around eight to ten and then right around 15, things start to slow down and cap off in quality. And right around $20 is what I would say is like when things kind of just level out and it doesn't really matter how much you spend past 20 bucks. For the most part, that's generally the best of the best. You're not going to get, you're going to get maybe 5% better if you spend $40 versus 20 but you, you, maybe you're gonna get twice as, uh, maybe if you spend $10 versus 20, it's gonna be 30% better. So what, what I'm saying is anywhere between five and 30 is like, those are all premium. I know guys who buy, this is so, to me this is stupid. You buy a Tatawai, hey, it's like $100. Not a Tatawai, you buy, I've seen, I've actually, I've seen these. Uh, what are these, these Gurkhas? I've seen a $100 Gurkha, and I'm like, I would rather buy 10, $10 cigars than a $100 cigar, because I know I'm gonna have much more enjoyment, you know, with 10, $10 cigars than one $100 cigar. Um, but I could tell people, hey, I had a $100 cigar, and that would be a fun story, but I know it's not, I know it's not 10 times better. I spent 115 on a Cohibo when I was visiting Doubt I'll ever smoke it. I keep it in my humidor so my cheap sticks have someone to feel jealous. That's what I'm saying. When you spend a lot of money on a cigar, for the most part, it is a, it's a memory. It's a memento. Um, I've seen cigars covered in gold leaf, like genuine gold cigars. And they have a, uh, a Swarovski crystal, uh, what's it called, Swarovski, a Swarovski crystal in the label. And so these are, you know, high-end cigars. And um, for the most part, they're kind of novelty because, you know, it's they're nice, but that doesn't mean they're better. 
Uh, Smokey Mo, have you ordered from CDN, Cigars Daily Nation? They have great exclusives that are in that range. Uh, CigarsDaily.com, very true. And I would also say Cigar Bid, and I would also say uh, Famous Smoke Shop. You, you, you find good deals there. Um, Tim has some, I would say, a little bit better. Um, <laughs> woo! Oh my gosh. 19 people had to hear that. Ugh. Hold on. I need a break. <laughs> um, Tim has procurated a lot of good stuff for the price. TNT is very good. I've never bought from TNT though, so I, I don't have experience, but um, what is similar to Arturo Fuente? Um, good question. What is similar to Arturo Fuente? Well, um, that's a loaded question because Arturo Fuente has a lot of different cigars and um, I don't know. Good question. I'm pretty sure Hmm. I'm assuming you like Lar. I'm, here's what I. Here's what I. When you say that, I'm assuming you like full-bodied cigars because when I think of Fuente, I think of Strong, and I think of Opus X, and so I would assume that you would love um, Norteño cigars. Uh, you know, um, I'm assuming you would love. My father, any Jaime Garcia stuff, you know, all that stuff. Um, I'm assuming you would love um, a lot of Habano wrap cigars. I know a lot of Arturo Fuentes are not Habano, but uh, when I hear that, I think you like bold and spicy. AJ Fernandez, that's what I meant. Um, you, you probably like AJ Fernandez a lot. Uh, Musaka. Oh, not Musaka. Muestro de Saca. Yeah, Saka, uh, Musaka, is it Musaka or Saka? Steve Saka, I think it is. $100 for a unicorn. I would never buy that. That's just me. But, hey, to each their own, if you, if you have $100 to burn, go for it. Like, like money is very relative, too. I've, I've realized that. Like, if someone wants to buy a $100 cigar and it brings them joy, then that's great. Do it, you know? There's nothing wrong with that. It, it's not like it's bad. It's just I don't do it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, see ya. Uh, bye, TV. What's the worst cigar you've ever had? Okay, so, um, the Thickologist. I like that name, Thickologist. The worst cigar I've ever had, check this out. It had to be a Maroma. M-A-R... M-A... M-A-R-O-M-A, I think? Maroma? And it was so bad. It was dry. It tasted like cardboard... It was a Churchill, and I bought it for $2 on Famous Smoke Shop when I first started. And I just figured, you know what, I need to load up my humidor, and if I load up my humidor with cheap stuff, it's better than not having any at all. And the problem with that is every single Maroma, I, Maroma is, uh, you'll see it often in Famous Smoke Shop stuff. Um, it's just, it's bad. I'm telling you, it tasted like burnt ass, okay? <laughs> so, um, don't... I would say, I mean, maybe I would try Maroma again, but it was bad. Again, it was it was so bad. Um, even if a cigar is bad, I can normally put it down. I mean, I can normally smoke it. I couldn't even get through ten minutes of this, um, so I basically had to throw them all away. Let's see here, another question. AJ is a master. He really is. Cherry Bomb by CAO is very good. Actually, um, CAO has pretty good flavor cigars, so. Those cigars and um, Drew State cigars are very good. Uh, the acid cigars. Chris Kirby, that's one of my favorites. Nice, and never had it, never had it. Smoky Mo, I prefer T52. Yeah, T52 is amazing. I have one for my wedding that I'm gonna smoke. And uh, I think they're better than the T9s, um, but uh, I think they're quite a bit more expensive. So if you are gonna go yeah, I think t I, I, I think overall the T52 is probably the best out of the legal series, maybe. Uh, for the price, it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Nub... Ca so, pretty much any Cameroon 
I'm a huge fan of because with Cameroon you get nutty flavors and so um, if you had a, a nub Cameroon I'm sure it was very good I, I like nub Connecticut's as well and um, yeah Cameroon's are great Smoky MD says any of the acid lime would be the worst to me so acid it's interesting because I've had two acids that were pretty good I had an acid blondie that was pretty darn good I'm not gonna lie if you have an acid blondie with like a like like a, a vanilla latte and an acid blondie it's hard to say you don't like that I was trying really hard to not like it and I really really liked it uh, so the blondies I like a lot um, uh, I've tried two others that were just kind of eh. Uh, I don't know. I don't like the sweetened tip, but some people love that. Nub Espresso is one of your favorites, Christina says. I definitely need to try that. Um, uh, I really want to try the Java, the regular Javas too. Mm hmm. Jason's. <laughs> Jason says the Blondie was recommended by. The stoner clerk, his first one ever. It was like my fifth cigar ever. Studio Tobacco is also great. Dark roasted coffee. Uh, ooh, smoky MD knows what's up. Christina, she says she prefers the sweet aromatic Sweet Jane versus Acid. Oh, I might have to try the Sweet Jane. I've never heard of that. Who makes Sweet Jane? That's what I want to know. Mm -hmm. Acid has a very sweet, sugary tip, and it's great for like 30 seconds. And then for me, I get, I don't know, it's just like, it's like an oil slick. It's like a, it's like stevia cover. It's just kind of oily, and I like it at first, but then I'm like, okay, I'm done with this. You know, it tastes a little bit too uh, artificial. Java Red is good. Drew State does. Drew State BT Deadwood. I've never had a BT Deadwood. Deadwood makes the Sweet Jane. Okay, so I might have to get a Deadwood then. A Deadwood Sweet Jane. Hmm. Hmm. I'm definitely going to have to get into that. This chaff got in my wine. Good thing it doesn't have any flavor. But let's see here. We got 19 people watching. If you're just tuning in, we just roasted some coffee. Let me go check this out now. This is the real trick. If you guys saw my, my live feed died. Come on. And um, my I pushed the cool button, so I had to I had to roast the coffee twice. Let's see here. Come on, baby. Oh, come on. baby, baby. Oh. Okay, hold on here. Oh, oh, there's comments. There's comments. Your cigar reminds me of a Avery Johnson, who's Sergeant from Halo. Oh, like this. Ah, ah. Some of these guys, they they chew on it. Hey, 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 oh, 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 oh. Uh -huh. Okay, Christina says, how's the coffee? Visually, it looks much better. Much better than before. And um, it's, it's the color I want. I don't know if it's going to be the flavor I want because it's double roasted. But we're spot on with color. Let's see here. Um... Coffee kind of puffs up a little bit. Can you see that? And the chaff in the middle is still there, which I like. There's a little bit of chaff in the middle of the bean. And some of it gets burned off, but I like a little bit on, I've noticed. Let me show you what this looks like. So the, the bean is puffed up. Do you see the little white in the middle? That's the chaff. And I prefer my coffee roasted all the way to the point where the chaff is still there, um, but just barely. And yet the coffee is puffed up, so there's it's very smooth bean. See how smooth it is? There's no oil coming out of it. Um, it's very smooth, and there's still chaff on it. And for me, that's a full city, 
plus, full city, full city plus, you know, medium to medium uh, dark. So this should be good. I'm gonna let this rest for a day. And um, yeah, I'll grind it up fresh and I'll, I'll have it latte. I prefer espresso. Um, I prefer espresso or AeroPress. So maybe the, the double roasting is, is the way to go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he like, Jin says he likes my pirate act. Asylum cigars are good. Christina says I have one on its way Tuesday. Nice, nice, Christina. Pete Jones, sorry, just jumped on. What are you smoking today? Today I'm smoking a uh, Gurkha Shaggy Foot. I think it's a very mild cigar. Um, it's very nice. I've had it for four years. The wrapper, if you saw earlier on, was coming off. It was a mess. It was a complete mess. Gurkha, thanks, Christina. I can't wait to try the La Aurora Barrel Aged by Carl Malone. Um, I, I, I'm a big fan of anything from La Aurora, especially the Preferidos. Um, I think they're a very underrated brand, um, but I've never seen their barrel aged stuff, so I'm kind of out of the loop. Uh, let's see here. Looks okay to me. Yeah, it looks great, man. So now I have a pound of coffee. If I if I really wanted to, um, I could sell this for about maybe, I don't know, maybe $8 a pound, $10 a pound. It costs about $5 a pound, and I could sell it for 10 just because I roasted it. And so that might not be a bad, you know, gift idea for Christmas, or I'm thinking also, uh, you know, just selling it for fun. I don't know. Let's see here. I've never tried, okay, so here's a good story about Maker's Mark cigars. When I was about 10 years old, my dad got one at a wedding, and I was like really intrigued because it came in a tubo, dipped in the same wax as the Maker's Mark bourbon, and um, I've never tried one. Um, I have friends who say they're not very good. I do know they're overpriced, um, so they probably are not even made by Maker's Mark. They just have the name Maker's Mark. And so it's my assumption that they just put some wax on there and it looks like a Maker's Mark thing. But um, from what I've known about them is that they're probably not very good for the price. Maker's Mark bourbon is good, but it's, it's, it's kind of expensive for what it is. So it seems like their cigars are the same thing. It seems like it's more of a brand. Very flammable. I've never... Oh, quorum are the terrible taste. Yeah, quorum are disgusting. I would never recommend a quorum. Let's talk about snow. Who's getting snow? We had a ton of snow hit tonight in Montana. Or is that Missouri? Never know. I think it's Missouri. Missouri. Uh, let's see here. Quorum, Gurkha, I think I should try. You should definitely try Gurkha. Hmm. Carl Malone was on Bova YouTube talking about his cigars. Interesting. Uh, let's see here. I was referring to James Cigar. Yes, I have a Gurkha Shaggy Foot. Um, I don't like a lot of Gurkhas, but every Shaggy I've had two, I've had two or three Shaggy Foots, and I'm gonna say this right now. They're very good. They're very mild. Um, they're a little bit flaky, but they're very good cigars. So um, I would definitely recommend a Shaggy Foot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Maker's Mark 46 is incredible. Okay, um, that's, okay, Maker's Mark 46 got me into bourbon. That's how good it is. Um, when, when you're, Maker's Mark versus Maker's Mark 46, they're very different. I think it's aged for longer, and the proof is, I believe, 46% um, ABV. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And so whatever they do differently, it's, it's definitely, if you're gonna spend money on Maker's Mark, Spend 10 more dollars and get Maker's Mark 46. You're gonna be very pleased. It's a very good bourbon. So Maker's Mark 46 is not hype. It's actually pretty darn good. It's, it's up there. Uh, just rain in Eastern Missouri, yeah. yeah. Mm. Jason asks, what's your go-to brand? Probably Padron. Or, 
I love drones. I love, um, I don't really have a go-to brand. I'll just say Padron. Um, I smoke a lot of them. Mm, yeah, Padron. Uh, Christina is in misery because it's freaking cold. Uh, Jason, I prefer scotch. It's definitely French oak spice. You can't stand a really sweet bourbon. Yeah, so I, I like scotch too. Um, I really like uh, scotch that... Um, so I just got some, okay, if you saw my, uh, my Instagram, I got some Lagavulin, very good. I also like Laphroaig, Laphroaig's a little harsh, but um, so I, I love the peaty stuff, um, with pipes especially. Um, scotch is very different though, it's kind of dry. I mean, a lot of people who like the sweet bourbon, the fresh oak flavor, uh, they don't like the scotch because they're like, oh, it's not sweet and it's kind of expensive. And, but that's probably because they haven't tried a lot of scotch. Um, Macallan is very good, for instance. Um, that's kind of like a bourbon. Um, I would say try Macallan. If you if you don't like scotch, try Macallan and try uh, Glenmorangie. Those are very easy to drink scotches that almost everyone who likes bourbon will like. Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. Kay Berry says, Maker's Mark 46 is aged longer with special seared French oak staves and added later in the process for a uniquely bold and smooth taste. See, I did not know that. I mean, I knew it was aged longer. The color is much darker. Um, I assumed the, it was just higher ABV, like 46. Um, but it's very good stuff. And I'm assuming those French oak staves are, yeah, not a lot of people probably do that, and that's why it's so good. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, Chris Kirby says, you should try Ardbeg and uh, OA. Petey good sweetness in a bottle. Yeah, so Ardbeg, I need to try it. People, so when people talk about uh, Petey Scotch, generally they are talking about, uh, I, I, I believe it, is it Highland? Is it Highland Scotch? pretty sure it is but so there it seems like there's three or four different or Isla scotch that's right not Highland so there's Highland there's like Lowland there's Speyside and then there's Isla and so it seems that it seems that uh, there's three or four big ones Ardbeg uh, you know there's a there's uh, of course Lagavulin and Lafroig and there's another one that's pretty big too uh, so these are all kind of very similar flavor profiles, and um, the, the Lagavulin 16 is much sweeter and smoother in, uh, than the Laphroaig, even though they're pretty similar in uh, everything else they do, I've heard. So, but I've heard Ardbeg is very good as well, so I need to try it. Mmm. Mmm. I forgot Campbellton, Campbelltown. I've never heard of Campbelltown. So there's Island and Isla. I didn't even know that. I thought they were the same. Island and... Is an Isla the same thing as an island? Because I thought that was just like Scottish for island. But what do I know, you know? I'm an American who drinks mostly bourbon. But it's kind of cool that there's different types based on the history of scotch. Um, Whereas American whiskey is generally, for the most part, bourbon. But we have a lot of weeded bourbons. We have rye. We have weeded bourbons, we have rye. Um, just regular whiskey doesn't have to be 51% corn. It could just be American whiskey. Sort of like Speyside, which is geographically part of the Highlands. So, interesting. I did not know that. Mmm. Christina, I've never read the Bourbon Bible. Maybe that's a good Christmas gift. Scotland has a few islands all with different distinct taste. Very true. Um, from what I've heard, some islands, the history of the, the shape of the still uh, was that 
was that shape based off of the, the based off of you know the amount of copper and the, the uh, you know just the way they distilled on the island so it's really interesting that hundreds of years of tradition are on one island and it's very different on a different island um, based off of what they like and what resources they had available to them but yeah there's t it seems like I, I, I think I just have to go one day I think that's what I have to do Mm-hmm. I don't want to put the cigar down, but it's... But I've been on here for almost two hours. What? Okay, we got 13 people. Should I... Oh, we got 14 people. Should I do... Should I answer any more questions? Or should I call it a day, bag up the coffee, and, uh, and, and call it a night? What do you think? Mm. Oh, we got more comments. Okay. Jason says, I'm not sure about the regions uh, are relevant today as they were before. You can find smoky drams from Speyside and sweet gentle drams from the islands. Albeit with a slight briny quality. I like that briny quality. It's kind of like that weird iodine flavor. Interesting. It's probably from the malt, I'm assuming. Or maybe it's from the water. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I guess you're right. As we be as we become more globalized as a just as a species I guess um, we're getting so much out outside influence that it's pr it probably doesn't matter anymore it's probably just about the global market what does the global market want um, but it's still kind of cool for me to know where it, where it came from so maybe that's really important if you're into heritage and if you like space side for instance like I do you're gonna come to expect certain things from that area probably yeah if I went to Scotland how awesome would that be vlogging that like drones everywhere actually they probably can't fly drones in, in Europe but I really want to go to Scotland and I'm also Scottish which is pretty cool At aging near the sea adds the briny flavor so I've seen that before where people age and the natural yeast in the air because of the seawater, for whatever reason, that yeast and that salt somehow gets into the, the mash and it actually influences the scotch. Um, and then aging it in the barrels that, have, that are near it, somehow it, it, it influences it. And the malt somehow uh, converts the starches in a certain way. Um, so I heard there's a lot of factors, but I don't know it's true. Jason, good question. Jason says, are there must-visit countries for cigar aficionados? Like, are there beer drinkers for Belgium and England and Germany, wine snobs, Italy, France, Australia, Chile? Yes. Um, so generally, well, if you're an American, it's hard to travel to Cuba, but they just opened it up. Um, so I would say number one um, would be Cuba, but it might be difficult still even though it's legal I think to travel there um, but I would say uh, I would say Dominican Republic because the people are awesome there uh, most people speak English there a lot of people speak English there um, let's see here Dominican Republic Honduras Nicaragua and uh, let's see here I would say Nicaragua would be because okay um, Drew Estate has a, a whole compound in Nicaragua, and he has cigar safaris that go down to Nicaragua. And so I would say Nicaragua would probably be the easiest one. Nicaragua and the, and the Dominican Republic. I would say those are the best, and Cuba, if you're allowed to go. Um, I think that's what I would, yeah. I think so. I would also go to Florida, just because Florida has a long history of cigars. Florida has uh, a lot of cool companies there. I mean, you can go to Ecuador, you can go here, you can go there. Um, but it seems like for the most part, Connecticut, you can go to Connecticut, but I don't think there's any cigar tours. I think it's just guys' farms. Um, yes, I'm on the West Coast. I am in Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, right now, I'm in my garage, and it's 60 degrees or so. Mm -hmm. 
so I think that's it. Um, I'm trying to think, do I have anything else I want to talk about? Ooh, Amy, what's up? What's what? I'm just having a nice cigar here, Amy. I'm having a, um, if you don't know, um, I had two different streams. My first stream cut out, my live stream. This is a Gurkha Shaggy Foot. I, I highly recommend them. It's just the wrapper peeled off, so whatever. It still tastes good. Um, let's see here. What other countries? Ecuador, Honduras, Nicaragua, um, Dominican Republic, Cuba is probably number one. I think those five countries would be good. I've never been to any of them, by the way. Uh, your take on Norteño. Norteño is very, very good. Um, I had a little box pressed, like, Longsdale. Norteño uh, was very spicy. It was very um, well balanced and spicy. That's what I'm going to say about that. It was very good. Jason says, it sounds like you're naming rum producing nations. Basically, yeah. Anytime there's rum, there's cigars, pretty much. Rum and cigars really go hand in hand. And in all of those cultures, they don't drink bourbon. They don't drink scotch. They drink rum. And, um, and so, yeah, pretty much anywhere there's Caribbean, you know, they can grow sugar cane really well. They could probably grow tobacco really well. Um, so yeah, that's a good observation. You know, like all of my um, Dominican friends in, in high school, in college, I had a lot of Dominican friends. They would drink rum, and they wouldn't drink. I mean, they wouldn't even really drink much other than rum and a lot of of like fruity drinks. You know, just I guess I mean Caribbean drink, I guess. A lot of vodka too, but everyone likes vodka, right? Hey. I'm trying to think. What else do I talk about? We got ten people. I think I think it's just dying. I think the live stream is dying. By the way, Amy, I was also roasting coffee. That's why I'm sitting here by my coffee roaster. Sorry, what's up with your What up? You're the man. We watch your videos all the time. Thanks for the content. I just wanna Oh, you watch my stuff, Amy. I just got into cigars a year ago. What's your favorite Nicaraguan cigar? Most Nicaraguans, I would say, are very good. Um, I would say I really, really, really like um, a lot of Padron cigars are based out of Nicaragua. The cool part about Padron is they have a farm there and they roll cigars there. It, it's all in-house, basically. It's all under the same company. And so the, what that means is they can really control how the cigar tastes from year to year, and they can make special batches. Um, you know, I, basically, Padron is the king in, in Nicaragua, but um, Drew State has some killer stuff there as well. Um, so I think both of those are, anything Nicaraguan from those guys are great. I really want to try the Nicaraguan Davidoff, too. Um, that would be a good one, I think. Let's see here. Uh, what's up with your man? Because sugarcane. Yeah, sugarcane. So sugarcane pretty much grows like, uh, from my understanding, it kind of grows like, uh, like a bamboo. And so you need a very... Um, you need a lot of sunshine, it seems like, and, and a lot of water. Yeah, and so, oh, they're, oh, they're rotated. So if you grow sugarcane one year, you don't want to over, you know, you don't want to over, uh, overwork the land. So you rotate out crops, and so it sounds like that's how they do it. They rotate between sugar and tobacco. Hmm. I did not know that. But I guess if you, here's what happens if you over, if you over farm your land, I'm, I'm assuming the soil will go bad and you'll have a, a dust bowl basically. So you have to give your land rest. 
um, every other year. People around here, they'll, they'll do corn one year, and then they'll do beans or lettuce. I smoked a 64, 50 year, and it was perfect. The Drew Estate Underground oh, Unico series are good as well. Definitely agree. Um, everyone I talk to loves those cigars, both the Padrones and the, and the Unico. Um, you can't go wrong, and that's what I tell people. It's just stick with what you know. Okay, let's see here. Takes on different nutrients. Interesting. All cigars have a blend. The company can be based in Nicaragua, but their blends can have leaves from many different places. Uh, unless it's a puro, then it's from only one place. Very true. So just because it's Nicaraguan, um, it probably has an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper. Um, or it could be Dominican fillers with a Nicaraguan. It could be anything, really. But generally, Padrones are puros, which are all from one place. And generally, um, they have a, a, a nice, strong, earthy flavor. Um, they don't have to, but they can. There's definitely like a flavor profile, I've noticed. If it's a if it's a Nicaraguan, you know, pure Nicaraguan. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Um, if you have any more questions, let me know. Um, I'll give you one more minute. This is just a Cabernet. Um, seems like a pretty good combo. You know what I hate about this ring light is I can see the reflection in my glasses. And it's driving me nuts because you guys can't see my eyes. Whatever. Hopefully one day I'll figure out the perfect live setup. What is your take on Dominican cigars compared to Nicaraguan cigars? So Dominican cigars are generally more, more mild. More mild in, in tobacco and more mild in flavor. They don't have to be that way. But for the most part, um, I've noticed that they are. And uh, Nicaragua seems to produce a very, uh, a more robust leaf, very thick and robust, very, uh, very hearty leaf. Whereas Dominican seems to have very big and big, big thin leaves. Um, and uh, I have some leaves upstairs, and all of the Dominican leaves are thinner, and they're easier to work with. Um, they're not as toothy. What I mean by toothy is gritty. They don't feel gritty. Whereas the Nicaraguan, they really have, they really absorb a lot of nutrients and the, they're very gritty. And um, so generally Dominicans are smoother, milder, um, maybe not as complex, maybe. It depends how they're blended. But um, yeah, that's what I've noticed. Mmm. Peace out, Andy. Thank you for watching. And yeah. All right, I think I'm gonna end it because yeah, I gotta go in. It's it's getting late. I'm getting cold. It's 60 degrees. Are you kidding me? And all right, see ya. See you, Chris. And I'm gonna get this coffee inside. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'm gonna try to do this every Sunday. So stay tuned for next Sunday. Peace.